Hello, I'm Stuart and this is Upcycle TV. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get an, an immaculate finish using chalk paint. In this video, I'm going to use Vintage with Grace chalk paint and the colour is Tredo Bay. I think it's Tredo Bay. I think it's uh, probably from somewhere in Cornwall. I don't know. Maybe. It's a great paint. For the reference of this video, it doesn't matter what chalk paint you're using. You can use this technique for any chalk paint um, and even if you're using emulsion too. If you are using emulsion, you're probably going to need a little bit more prep work. Uh, but the basic principle is still the same. So I'm going to use this chest of drawers. I'm going to show you on one of the drawers here. It's back to the wood. Um, it has been finished. The wood has been finished. So we're going to give it a light sand first with some 80 grit sandpaper. I'm trying to make, move the, my paint out of the way. I don't want any dust going in that. Okay, so just, this is, just hand sanding it. I'm just giving it a clean really. Just enough, you know, we just want the paint to stick to it. If it's if you've got a varnished piece, you might need to do this. Here. I've got some soapy water in here. I have to use sugar soap. I haven't got any sugar soap to hand today. Um, so I'm just using some um, washing up liquid, mix with some water, spray it on, give that a little dry off with a cloth, a paper towel. That's it really for the prep. So sugar soap or soapy water and wipe it back down. You, you can only ever get as good a finish as the wood or what you're working with itself. So this wood is nice and smooth, so we're working on a nice smooth surface. If you've got um, an old paint job that's got loads of paint runs or you've got wood that's got little nicks and little, you know, grains that have popped out or um, splits in the wood, whatever it might be, you know, you've got work with what you've got. So there's no point taking a really old, terrible, beaten up piece of furniture and expecting it to come out on like a furniture you know um, professional spray is finished because that, that's just impossible you can obviously fill the gaps and sand them down and do a lot more prep work but you're only ever going to be able to get it as good as what you're working with as i said i'm using the vintage with grace chalk paint but the key point about this there's two factors firstly we're going to use a mini roller okay so the reason why i use the mini roller obviously because when you're working on furniture it's a nice size and we go along and it, it covers it nicely. Um, but the important factor is a lot of people say use foam rollers. Rollers They are okay, the foam ones, but they're not as good as these. So this is a Hamilton Prestige um, felt sleeve. They're absolutely fantastic. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description in this video. So if you wanna buy some, you can get them ordered now. Okay, I've also got these, which I haven't used before. Now these are supposed to be even better than the felt finish, they're 100% wool. Um, so if we get time in this video, I'm gonna have a little go and see if they make any difference. Get going, we need to put some paint in our tray. You've gotta make sure, maybe this tray looks messy, but I've completely cleaned it. Uh, make sure there's no bits of flaky paint. You've gotta keep your working area completely contaminant free and I've got this crappy little plastic one. The best paint roller um, trays to get are the metal ones because um, you don't get any of the movement in the tray. You can see it moves about, and as it moves about, if there's any paint that's residue that's stuck on there, um, it will then sort of crack as it bends and chip and fall into the paint. So metal ones are better. Also much easier to clean, you can sort of Give them a good scrub and stuff like that. Let's put some paint in there. So I want to be nice and gentle here. I don't want to get paint 
all over the edge of the can. I don't want to start tipping it out. So I'm just going to get a paintbrush and just drop it into the roller. We don't need loads because I'm only doing the one drawer front today. It's just a few bits like that. So we put the roller in here. You want to completely cover the roller. So make sure that the paint covers the whole thing. The other factor, I said there's two main factors to this. Um, the first factor is this, using these mini rollers with these particular sleeves. And the second one is polishing the paint once you've done it. Which I'm going to show you obviously once the paint first lays um, dry. So we've got enough on there, rolled it off on here. Make sure we've got a nice even amount of paint. Now, start one end and just roll. Don't matter if you miss, it's, you know, it's a bit gappy here or there. Like this. slight angle on the edges, it doesn't matter, we can just put the roller at an angle and whiz that along there too. And you can do this, look, as you see, you've got a reasonable amount of drying time and it's a nice warm day today so it is drying quicker as well, even so we've still got enough time and we can actually, it's a nice amount of area to cover and there we have it. Now we can even go along these flat edges, look, we've got no cutting in because this particular piece you've got no, the nice straight edges to run on. And that's it, literally. That's my first coat done. And that has taken, what's that taken? 30 seconds or something? That quick. Beautiful thing about a good quality chalk paint like Vintage with Grace is that, um, you know, it's self priming. Um, and it just, you know, the cut, you can see the opacity is absolutely fantastic. The co it covers, it goes such a long way, it's just great. It's one of my favorite paints to work with. So we're gonna leave that to dry now. Once it's dry, and a little bit more than touch dry, touch dry is not quite enough, we need it to be properly dry. So I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it about an hour today, um, go and have a cup of coffee, and then come back. When it is dry, we're gonna use one of these, it's a sanding sponge and they are absolutely fantastic. This is gonna help you achieve a nice smooth finish. What it will do is it will take off as much as we need to take off in terms of the smooth finish, but not, but it won't, it's not like sandpaper where it's gonna take off too much paint. It's just, it literally, you're polishing the surface. I'll show you how to do that once the paint dries. In fact, while that's drying, I'm actually gonna use up the excess paint because I don't want the paint um, to dry out, so I'm just going to use up the excess paint and just paint the top of this on here. Just show you again the technique, it's just nice flat. You can go in different directions because when we polish it, that will take out any of that anyway. Um, but you know, to make your life easier, it's better if you stay in one direction. Look at that. So while we're here, you might be thinking, well, you can't use a roller when you're on um, a bit like this, which is a, a beveled finish, and you've got little grooves in here and gaps. You're never going to get a roller in there. So obviously, we just use a hand brush and just as you normally would. Nice strokes in one direction, not too much paint, but enough to, you know, get a cover on there. You don't have to be really thin coats. People get obsessed about these really thin coats. It doesn't matter um, because we're going to polish out any of the brush strokes anyway. Let's come back over to the side. Show you just again.
this is the technique now. So what we're doing is we're polishing in between coats. So if you see any, if you have got any little drips or lumps of paint, you can just polish them out and, until it's smooth. Even if you have to go back to the wood, it doesn't matter because you can just, we're just going to paint over it again anyway. So sand and sperm. Well, you can buy these on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. So we just literally go over in a circular motion. And when you run your hand over that, you can feel it's just perfect. So easy, isn't it? It's really not that difficult at all to get a perfect finish. Um, and basically, once this is done, when I've completely smoothed this over, another coat of paint, and just keep repeating the process until you're happy with it. But I promise you, if you've got a lovely smooth piece of wood underneath, you can get an absolutely perfect spray-like finish. see the dust coming off that that's obviously from the paint so yeah just keep going with it run your hand along it happy with that tiny 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 bit of spray soaking water we don't want too much here it's just enough to get rid of that residue of dust there you go, look, you want to get rid of that. We don't want that on that. But that's it, we're ready to paint again now. Okay, coat two done. Seriously, it really is that quick. And as I said before, same principle again. Polish over when it's dry. Now, the last thing, if you want to, if you are still struggling a little bit with the finish, um, you can always water the paint down a little bit if the paint allows that. Um, it's a water-based chalk paint, this one, so this will. Um, you can do sort of maybe add 30% water to your paint. So that way then the paint is a lot um, more fluid. So it will actually run and it will almost self settle. And then you can polish again. So you can keep that playing with that process until you get this finish that's absolutely immaculate. Just keep going with it until you're happy with it. While we're waiting for this to dry, I'm gonna take this opportunity to tell you about something that I've built, which might be of interest. If you're a professional furniture painter, so that you're, you know, you're painting people's furniture to make money, um, some people may be wanting to move into that or have to do a few of their own pieces. If it's something that you really want to do and grow, um, I've built a course that will help you actually find as many customers as you want. Um, and when you're really busy like that, you can put your prices up and you can start delivering really fantastic work. A lot of people say that this market is oversaturated. They say that it's, there isn't enough work to go around because there's so many people doing it. Not true, not true. It's saturated on Facebook, it's saturated on Instagram, but this course will show you a way that you can ignore all that noise and actually get all the customers for yourself because no one else is doing this. Pop over and have a look at the course now. I put a link in the description of this video. There's some tiny little flecks of white. And I don't know if it was on the drawer front previously or whether someone's contaminated the paint. But it's tiny little um, surface white, little white blobs. It's no point me showing on the camera because 
I'm just not going to pick it up. Um, however, it's only a little bit here, that's it. So you're going to come across things like this. Just to, I've just rubbed it down to make sure it's completely flat, make sure these little white lumps aren't raised, uh, and then I can just paint over it. So it's not a big issue, it's not going to cause us any problem. We're ready for the third coat now. So what I'm going to do, I'll put a little bit of paint um, in the tray, and I'm going to now add a little bit of water. I'm just going to put about 20%. I just want it a little bit water, more watery, and then I'm going to go over the surface with it. So now we have a more watery consistency. I'm just going to lay my paint over. You can see it's actually a lot runnier. So we have to be really careful with it now for runs. Um, but also, hopefully, being more watery, it will run a little bit and, and self-level itself. And even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter because we can smooth it out anyway. So one thing we have got on here, which we're not going to get rid of, is you see the grain of the wood through the paint. That's a really good thing because that actually looks really nice. If you go into a, a really high-end kitchen showroom and you look at the uh, painted doors where they've been spray painted to perfection um, and if they're oak, you will still see the grain in the door. And that, that's the look that's wanted because you, know, you can see that it's a, a solid oak kitchen that's been hand-painted. Um, this isn't about brush strokes. But, but the grain coming through the paint is a really good look. And we have that here, which is great. I think is the best way, if you want to get pristine finish, is to use a product like Polyvine. And to use the matte Polyvine is very, very important. Um, the, there are options, so you've got something like a French Eek finishing coat, which is very good, very hard wearing. Um, I use it a lot but I don't like to use it on my pristine finishes because I find that the French finishing coat leaves um, a, a sort of mid sheen. Um, and the problem with anything that leaves a sheen, and that's the same for wax as well, you never quite, you can never get, you know, this ultimate perfect finish when you're, when you're putting, when you're brushing on um, furniture wax. Um, and the same for finishing coat, because it has the semi-gloss finish, when it dries, um, gloss will reflect the light, that's why it's glossy, right? So um, if you get any imperfections, you'll see them a lot more because you're creating shadows and reflections and stuff, so you'll see any imperfections. Whereas if you use something that's matte, um, the matte finish, will, the light will just hit it and, and it's dead, right? So uh, very similar to what, what will happen with the paint, um, this paint. When it's wet, you can see more imperfections. When it dries, you can see a lot less. So we want a matte finish, and Polyvine do a dead flat matte, and it's it's fantastic. So uh, you can just you can brush it on. You can use um, the same principle with the um, the felt sleeve, and off it goes. Um, you can even polish it as well. So we'll go through that process in this video, um, just so you can see how exactly how that works. While that's drying, what we're going to do is test out the uh, the wall. We're going to test out the wall mini roller because I'm I'm very intrigued to see if it's as good or maybe better, certainly more expensive than the felt rollers. Um, so let's have a look. Oh, I didn't want to do that. One thing I noticed straight away is it holds more paint. It sucked up all that paint. We're going to have to put more in there. Um, 
In theory, that's a good thing. I suppose it depends on the project you're working on, but my God, that really eats up the paint. Okay, so let's have a look at what the finish is like. the felt rollers um, a lot better. This holds so much more paint, which is unnecessary for what we're doing. Um, you could probably make the paint longer last time. So you could probably, you know, do three um, draw fronts to every one for the amount of paint that you're putting on, if that makes sense. Um, so it's probably good for speed, but I don't know. I mean, the finish is 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 good. It's, it, I'd say it's still better than the foam roller, um, but there is a slight. It's got a slight. It leaves a slight texture to it, which will come out with the polishing. But to be honest, if you're going to pay more, what's the point? You might as well stick with the felt one. So um, this answers the question. These are the best. If you know anything better than this, please let me know. But uh, this is still my absolute number one. Hamilton Prestige. Don't forget there is a link in the description of the video if you want to buy yourself some of those mini sleeves. While we're doing this, I can also tell you about uh, Vintup. So Vintup is a completely free site. There's no listing fees or commission fees um, or anything like that for the seller. Um, and it's free for the buyer as well. And you can find that site at www.vintup.co.uk. Yeah, we're almost ready to wrap this video up now. I'm just going to show you, I, I hope you can see it's got this beautiful oak grain coming through the paint. But the, the paintwork is fantastic, it's absolutely immaculate, it's faultless. Uh, so we just do a final polish now, very light. Tiny bit of spray, just get rid of any of the final dust. Okay, so that now is actually finished. It's very, very smooth, it's faultless, there's no brush marks, it's an absolute perfect finish. Okay, but however, it does still feel a bit chalky, and you might want something on there to toughen up the paint anyway. So, as I said earlier, I'm going to show you the polyvine finish. So this is polyvine, and I'm going to put it on the same roller. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I haven't got another. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to put it in because actually, um, you can actually mix this with paint. It's a it's a fantastic product, polyvine. Anyway, let's roll that out, and then we'll just roll it on. This is exactly the same as if you're putting paint on. You can hand paint this on as well if you're using a brush. Um, the important point, you can do this as well with brush, by the way. And you, you know, the whole painting process, the immaculate finish. Uh, the whole point with it is just to make sure you might have to do a little bit more work with this if you're doing it with brush. But there we go. That's completely covered now in the polyvine. Okay, this is a little bit foamy when you put it on, but that's fine. That will now dry completely hard and because it's this um, dead flat matte finish, you won't lose any of that appeal of you know the, the, that lovely matte finish that the chalk paint gives you. Um, and that's about it. I'm going to wrap it up there for this video. I will put a link in the description for the polyvine. I will put a link in for the felt roller sleeves and I'll put a link in for sanded sponges. All 
that's it, that's all you need. Those products and obviously your paint and that's it. You can get, just like this, an absolutely fantastic, 100% beautiful finish. I'm Stuart, this is Upcycle TV. Please like the video and please subscribe. And please, um, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you.